2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, not sinlessly perfect, but perfect in heart, thoroughly furnished, or thoroughly, excuse me, furnished unto all good works. Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15. Verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. What are the scriptures? These are the scriptures. The authorized version. Okay? Commonly called the King James Version. Okay? <coughs> Beg your pardon. This video is going to be for our instruction in righteousness. We're going to be within the Old Testament. Okay? So, get your authorized version of the scriptures and turn in there in your authorized version of the scriptures to Jeremiah chapter 37. Jeremiah chapter 37. Got a lot of stuff going on right now um, for us, my wife and I. So please, brethren, Church of the Living God, please keep us in your prayers. Um, lots of stuff is, is happening right now. Um, also, too, uh, brethren, please keep my wife, your sister, Susan, in prayer for her feet. She's um, having some issues with her feet, and um, please pray about that. And please, please, please keep us in your prayers, brethren, sisters, church, and God. We pray for so many of you every single day. We all... We all need prayer right now. Jeremiah chapter 37. We're going to be reading verses 1 on to verse 10 in Jeremiah chapter 37. This video, again, is for our instruction in righteousness. What we need a lot of right now. Okay? And you also have to remember, since we are going to be within the Old Testament, you have to also keep in mind the dispensational difference. Okay? What we're going to be looking at is under the law, under a different dispensation. Under the dispensation of the law, it was faith and works. Okay? Eternal security was not available within the dispensation of the law, okay? Eternal security was not there. You have to remember that as we are going through this, okay? Jeremiah chapter 37, verses 1 on to verse 10. And King Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, reigned instead of Coniah, the son of Jehoiakim, who Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, made king in the land of Judah. But neither he nor his servants nor the people of the land did hearken unto the words of the Lord which he spake by Jeremiah by the prophet Jeremiah. Yes, and Jeremiah was warning the people, repent, turn from your wickedness. God's judgment is coming. How severe is it going to be for you? Okay? How severe Jeremiah was preaching a message from the Lord that the people didn't want to hear. The people wanted to hear, oh, uh, within two full years, 
God is going to restore, rebuild. When no, in reality, God's judgment was coming. And that's what Jeremiah was preaching. While the other prophets were itching the ears of the people, telling them what they wanted to hear. Jeremiah was telling them what they needed to hear. Okay, keep that in mind. And Zedekiah the king sent Yehukal, the son of Shalemiah, and Sephaniah, the son of Maziah, the priest, to the prophet Jeremiah, saying, Pray now unto the Lord our God for us. Now Jeremiah came in and went out among the people, for they had not put him into prison. Then Pharaoh's army was come forth out of Egypt, and when the Chaldeans that besieged Jerusalem heard tidings of them, they departed from Jerusalem. So, the Chaldeans, the Babylonians, King Nebuchadnezzar, who was sent to execute God's judgment. You read of King Nebuchadnezzar that the Lord himself referred to him as his servant. You read in the book of Daniel, okay? King Nebuchadnezzar, I truly believe, is in heaven right now. I truly believe that. King Nebuchadnezzar was the instrument of God's wrath, God's tool, God's servant that he used to exercise his judgment upon Jerusalem, upon the Jew, upon Israel, okay? And upon many other places, okay? King Nebuchadnezzar uh, received mercy of the Lord, okay? But eventually Babylon fell. Yes, it did, of course. But King Nebuchadnezzar, like I said, was referred to as the Lord's servant. By his own mouth, by his own words, the Lord referred to Nebuchadnezzar as his servant. Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar, one and the same person, okay? Person is the spirit, soul, and body, by the way, okay? But they were there, uh, uh, the Chaldeans were there to serve the judgment of the Lord, okay? They were being used of the Lord, being allowed to execute judgment upon Israel. Then Pharaoh's army, verse 5, came forth out of Egypt. Pharaoh's army. Nebuchadnezzar, like I said, he was the instrument used of the Lord to execute judgment judgment upon Israel. Okay? Okay? Pharaoh. What can you liken Pharaoh onto? Or whom can you liken Pharaoh onto within the Old Testament? Satan. In Egypt, what can you liken Egypt onto in the Old Testament for our instruction in righteousness? The world. So God's judgment the Chaldeans, King Nebuchadnezzar, okay? Pharaoh, Egypt. Hmm. Hmm. Let's continue. Verse 6. Then came the word of the Lord unto the prophet Jeremiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, Thus shall ye say to the king of Judah, that sent you unto me to inquire of me. Behold, Pharaoh's army, which has come forth to help you, shall return to Egypt into their own land. And the Chaldeans shall come again and fight against the city and take it and burn it with fire. Thus saith the Lord, Deceive not yourselves, saying the Chaldeans shall surely depart from us, for they shall not depart. God's judgment was inevitable. God's judgment, you read the book of Jeremiah. Read the book of Lamentations sometime, dear brethren. And those of you who are lost, who will see this, <laughs> take a consideration to these things that you're hearing right now. Okay? God's judgment is coming. 
okay? As is the example given to us within the scripture here in the book of Jeremiah. God's judgment was coming to Jerusalem, to Israel, okay? Regardless. And he was using Nebuchadnezzar, his servant. Judgment was coming. It was inevitable. The degree of that judgment was the only thing left for the people of Israel. Okay? You read Jeremiah, plain as day. Okay? Judgment was coming. Verse 9. Thus saith the Lord, Deceive not yourselves, saying, The Chaldeans shall surely depart from us, for they shall not depart. You might have a little bit of respite going on right now, today, outside your door, huh? Might think, oh, things are going to get back to normal. Things are going to, you know, be like they once were. <laughs> Verse 5. Then Pharaoh's army was come forth out of Egypt. Pharaoh's army was come forth out of Egypt saying peace and safety but like I said we're, we purposely are not going to be referencing the New Testament as far as going into the scriptures we're going to stay within the old okay so God's impending um, absolute judgment was coming there was no avoiding it but here comes Pharaoh Satan out of Egypt, out of the world, to distract hmm? the judgment of the Lord? Hmm. Does Satan have that ability to do so? No. No. Then what was happening here? Look at this. Look at the verse. Verse 9. Thus saith the Lord, deceive not yourself, saying, the Chaldeans shall surely depart from us, for they shall not depart. Verse 10. For though ye had smitten the whole army of the Chaldeans that fight against you, and there remain but wounded men among them, yet surely, yet should they rise up every man in his tent and burn this city with fire. Okay? Again, this is pretty serious. God's judgment. God's impending doom was coming. Okay? But Pharaoh came along. God allowed it to happen. God allowed it to happen, absolutely. To distract. Okay? God allowed that to happen. Giving mercy unto his people. Because judgment was coming. Impending doom was there. But the severity, again, of what they were to face, that could have been altered. God was going, his, his mind was set. They weren't going to get away from it. Just like you. You're not going to get away from it. You got a little peace. Pharaoh's army has come out of Egypt. And now, attention is taken away from the impending doom, right? Yeah. Deceive not yourselves saying the Chaldeans shall surely depart from us. God's judgment is not depart from any of us. We who are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, we are going to give an account of ourselves at the judgment seat of Christ. We are saved, born again, converted, sealed until the, until the day of redemption, eternally secure. What's going to be judged at the judgment seat of, uh, of Christ is our rewards, our our rewards in heaven, our um, uh, our own um, act, our kingdom of heaven inheritance, big part of that. Okay. Judgment is coming. We have to remember something now. Okay. We have to remember something. Go to Isaiah chapter thirty. Okay. Isaiah chapter thirty. Egypt, Pharaoh, coming came out of Egypt. Right now there's a lull, isn't there? It's not over. 
God's judgment is coming. Isaiah chapter 30, verses 1 on to verse 7. Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with the covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin, that walk to go down into Egypt, and have not asked at my mouth, to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh, and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Therefore, shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame, and the trust of the shadow of Egypt your confusion. Look at that verse. Don't look at me. Look at the verse. Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh, instruction in righteousness, the strength of Pharaoh, think Satan. Satan is strong. Yes, he is the anointed. He is the anointed cherub. But the reality is, he's only doing what God allows him to do. And those of you. Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame. And the trust and the trust in the shadow of Egypt. Your confusion. Egypt likened on to a type of the world for us today in this dispensation and when you look in the scripture for our instruction and in righteousness when you read that about Egypt okay type of the world you're trusting in the shadow of the world this world has been allowed has been allowed to be um, dictated by Satan, the little G God of this world, okay? You're trusting on things of the world. You're putting, who are, you're, uh, you're trusting in the strength of Satan, okay? God's judgment is coming. What, what, what do you think? Things of the world are going to save you? Verse 4. For his princes were at Zoan, and his ambassadors came from Hanes. They were all ashamed of a people that could not profit them, nor be in help nor profit, but a shame and also a reproach. The burden of the beasts of the south into the land of trouble and anguish, from whence come the young and the old lion, the viper and fiery fiery flying serpent, they will carry their riches upon the shoulders of young asses, and their treasures upon the bunches of camels, to, to a people that shall not profit them. For the Egyptians shall help in vain, and to no purpose. Therefore have I cried concerning this, their strength is to sit still. Things of the world are not going to profit you. You think you're safe. Hmm? Think you got all your bases covered. You think now it's finally going away. Oh, no. No. No, dear friend. No, dear friend. No, 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 no. Go back to Jeremiah chapter 37. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. <laughs> Verses 9 and 10 in Jeremiah chapter 37. Take your part. Thus saith the Lord, deceive not yourselves, saying the Chaldeans shall surely depart from us, for they shall not depart. Remember, in this context, okay, the Chaldeans were the vessel of God's judgment. Okay? God's judgment. People out there, you who are lost, you have decided, you have given yourself over to believe a lie. Okay? And God is sending you what you want. You want to believe a lie? 
Here you go. More of it. You have peace and safety right now, huh? For though ye had smitten the whole army of the Chaldeans that fight against you, and there remained but wounded men among them, yet should they rise up every man in his tent and burn this city with fire. Yeah. It's, a, it's, un, it's unavoidable. It's inevitable. God's judgment is coming. In the things of the world, <laughs> there's nothing on this world or in this world that's going to save you. Nothing. Nothing. Go back to Isaiah now, to Isaiah chapter 31. Okay, Isaiah chapter 31. Remember, for our instruction in righteousness, okay, Egypt likened unto a type of the world, Pharaoh likened unto a type of Satan, okay? Isaiah chapter 31, verses 1 on to verse 3. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help, and stay on horses, and trust in chariots because they are many, and in horsemen because they are very strong. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. Yet he also is wise and will bring evil, and will not call back his words, but will arise against the house of the evildoers and against the help of them that work iniquity. Now the Egyptians are men and not God. And their horses flesh and not spirit. When the Lord shall stretch out his hand, both he that helpeth shall fall, and he that is hoping shall fall down, and they all shall fail together. And, and you got to also keep this in mind. Go to Isaiah chapter 36. Isaiah chapter 36. Now, this is when Rapshakeh was there uh, <laughs> doing some propaganda right in front of King Hezekiah and the people of Jerusalem, okay? All right? Now, Rapshakeh and who he represented was also a heathen nation, okay? But what's very interesting about this, Rabshakeh, who was representing the king of Assyria, okay, <laughs> all right, keep this in mind. This is what the king of Assyria even said of Egypt, okay? And yet they were both of the same mindset, okay? Because if you were to read the entirety of Isaiah chapter 36, okay, if you were to read that, you would see that this king of Assyria <laughs> is clearly speaking against, obviously, the God of Israel, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? But yet, he mentions this, verses 4 and verse 6 in Isaiah chapter 36. And Rabshakeh said unto them, Say ye now to Hezekiah, Thus saith the great king, the king of Assyria, What confidence is this wherein thou trustest? I say, sayest thou, but they are but vain words. I have counsel and strength for war. Now on whom dost thou trust that thou rebellest against me? Lo, thou trustest in the staff of this broken reed on Egypt. Whereon, if a man lean, it will go into his hand and pierce it. So is Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and all that trust in him. Now, this is what Rabshakeh was saying of Egypt. And Pharaoh, likened unto a type of Satan, and likened unto, the type, unto a type of the world. Okay? 
What's going on here? Holy place. Go to Psalm 10. Okay? Because they're one and the same. Assyria. Okay? And Egypt. Okay? Yes, they were different nations. Yes. But, for instruction and righteousness, both were heathen kingdoms. Okay? Both were heathen kingdoms. Both were contrary to the Lord. All right? They were both serving the same end. But yet here in Isaiah chapter 36, he said unto, uh, Rabshakeh said unto Hezekiah about Egypt, oh, you're trusting in these guys, but yet they themselves, <laughs> yet they themselves were heathen. What was going on here? Psalm chapter 10. Psalm chapter 10, and I have an expository video on this. Okay? <clears throat> I, uh, Psalm chapter 10. Uh, uh, Psalm 10. Excuse me. Psalms don't have chapters. There you go, brother. <laughs> Verses 9 and 10. He lieth and waits secretly as a lion in his den. He lieth and wait to catch the poor. He doth catch the poor when he draweth him into his net. He croucheth and humbleth himself that the poor may fall by his strong ones. He humbleth himself that the poor may fall by his strong ones. So, humbling himself and sending out others to fulfill his will. Kind of like what Catholicism does. You know, the Jesuits through their front organizations such as the Freemasons, okay? As their uh, front organizations such as the Illuminati, okay? Jesuits are here ruling all these other things. They humble themselves that the poor might fall by their strong ones. And oh look! The army of Egypt has come out! <laughs> Pharaoh and his army saying peace, peace! There was no peace. There is no peace. <laughs> you see? But see here, looking back at Isaiah chapter 36, verses 4 on to verse 6, that's a manipulation tactic. Look at it. They were working on, I mean, Egypt and Assyria, heathen nations. Okay? Yeah, Egypt is a broken reed, but here's Assyria. They're all working one on the same end. Isn't that interesting, huh? Now go to Psalm 146. Psalm 146. Psalm 146. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul, while I live. Will I praise the Lord? I will sing praises unto my God. Will I have any being? Put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man in whom there is no help. His breath goeth forth, he returneth to his earth. In that very day his thoughts perish. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God which made heaven and earth, the sea and all that therein is, which keepeth truth forever, which executeth judgment for the oppressed, which giveth food to the hungry. The Lord loseth the prisoners. The Lord openeth the eyes of the blind. The Lord raiseth them that are bowed down. The Lord loveth the righteous. The Lord preserveth the strangers. He relieveth the fatherless and widow. But the way of the wicked he turneth upside down. 
The Lord shall reign forever, even thy God, O Zion, unto all generations. Praise ye, Lord. So, Pharaoh and his army has come out of Egypt. Okay? Y'all think you got peace right now. Get back to normal and everything. Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, get back to all that normal stuff that you, that you wanted uh, that was going on before the very first psychological uh, operation was instituted by the Jesuit order. Yeah? Yeah, you think so? You think this is over? <laughs> think this is over, huh? Uh, Jeremiah 37, verse 9 and 10 again. Thus saith the Lord, Deceive not yourselves, saying, The Chaldeans surely shall surely depart from us, for they shall not depart. For though ye had smitten the whole army of the Chaldeans that fight against you, and there remain but wounded men among you, among them, excuse me, yet should they rise up every man in his tent and burn the city with fire. Jeremiah chapter 17. I need to speak the same thing unto you is not grievous, needful. <laughs> People out there, they think it's all gone, they think it's over. They're implementing new psychological operations to begin. They're, they're putting little things in there to go off on these tangents. This isn't over, people. You need to be prepared. Okay, you need to be prepared. Jeremiah 17, verses 1 on to verse 10. <laughs> the sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron, and with the diamond and with the point of a diamond. It is graven upon the tables of their heart and upon the horns of your altars. Whilst their children remember their altars and their groves by the green trees upon the high hills. See, it's trickled down from generation to generation to generation. Okay? The deception, the deceit. Okay? It's gone from generation to generation. If the root is bad, the fruit is bad. And look what, especially here in America. Look at America. And there are those out there who think that American can be rescued. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this ain't over, people. This ain't over. Verse 3. O oh, my mountain in the field, I will give thy substance and all thy treasures to the spoil, and thy high places for sin throughout all thy borders. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn forever. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. See, if you're all about flesh, okay, you can say that you're, the Lord knows your heart all you want, all day, all night, okay? But if your main concentration is on flesh, uh, your heart is not right with the Lord. And most of the time, most people who uh, claim to be Christian, but yet are all about the flesh, are not saved to begin with. One's attitude and mentality and thought on flesh is very telling from whence they stand. Mm. 
Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. For he shall be like the heath in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land, and not inhabit it. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when heat cometh, but her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Are you depending on Pharaoh's army coming out of Egypt to help you, to save you, to bring in peace? If this is going to go away. You're a fool. And I say that to you with no delight. Because remember now, like now, like I said at the beginning of this video, this is for our instruction in righteousness. Go to Ezekiel chapter 16. Ezekiel chapter 16. We will be reading verses 44 on to verse 52 in Ezekiel chapter 16. Behold, everyone that useth Proverbs shall use this proverb against thee, saying, As is the mother, so is her daughter. And who is the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth? Mystery Babylon the Great. Who is that? Roman Catholicism and her army, the Jesuit order. And who are her daughters? Islam. Mormonism. Um, the Jehovah's Witnesses. Pentecostals, Charismatics. Oh, Lutherans, Calvinists, oh, yeah, yeah. Those might not have started out, some would argue, as uh, immediate daughters of the whore. But the Jesuits run virtually all of the religions on earth. I say virtually all because there is one that they cannot. Those of us who believe the authorized version of the scriptures and hold to this by faith and practice. Hence, Church of the Living God, Mystery Babylon, cannot control. It's impossible. Verse 45, Thou art thy mother's daughter that loveth her husband and her children, that, excuse me, that loatheth, excuse me, that loatheth her husband and her children. And thou art the sister of thy sisters, which loathed their husbands and their children. Your mother was a Hittite, and your father an Amorite. And thine elder sister is Samaria, she and her daughters, that dwell at thy left hand. And thy younger sister, that dwelleth at thy right hand, is Sodom and her daughters. Yet hast thou not walked after their ways, 
who are done after their abominations. But, as if that were a little thing, thou wast corrupted more than they in all thy ways. As I live, saith the Lord God, Sodom thy sister hath not done, she nor her daughters, as thou hast done, thou and thy daughters. It's always fascinating unto me when you look at how the generations differ. Um, I'm 47 years of age, going to be 47 years of age this year. 46 or 47. I was born in 1974, August 5th. So, you do the math. But um, my generation, way, way back then, was wicked. But the generations coming now, the generations now, are actually far wicked, far more wicked now than they were way back when. Yet thou hast, verse 47, Yet hast thou not walked after their ways, nor done after their abominations, okay? But, as if that were a very little thing, thou wast corrupted more than they in all thy ways. Keeps getting worse. That's the progression of sin. It gets worse. Thus, the progression. It gets worse. Do you see? Verse 48 again. As I live, saith the Lord God, Son of thy sister hath not done, she nor her daughters, as thou hast done, thou and thy daughters. Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom. Pride. Fullness of bread. An abundance of idleness was in her was in her and in her daughters. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. Pride, fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness. Where it says, Give me neither poverty or riches. Give me not riches, lest I get proud and deny the Lord. Give me neither poverty that I that I don't steal and take the name of my Lord in vain. Fullness of pride, fullness of bread and abundance. Because of fullness of bread and abundance, there's pride. Verse 50. And they were haughty and committed abomination before me. Therefore I took them away as I saw good. Neither hath Samaria committed half of thy sins, but thou hast multiplied thine abominations more than they, and hast justified thy sisters in all thine abominations which thou hast done. Thou also, which hast judged thy sisters, bear thine own shame for thy sins that thou hast committed more abominable than they. They are more righteous than thou, yea, be thou confounded also, and bear thy shame in that thou hast justified thy sisters. Think about that. Again, the people of my generation are looking at the generation that's coming. It's like, yeah, our generation was wicked and sinful, but what's going on now? See, Thermodynamics. Everything breaks down in time. Things get worse. Evolution. <laughs> Boom. Evolution teaches things get better in time. Now what's this, uh, this heresy, this age of Aquarius thing? If you've never heard of that, good. Leave it alone. It's, it's crazy. Crazy. But, uh, yeah, evolution says that things get better in time. When the scriptures plainly tell us in time, when it concerns man, things get worse. 
the progression is a progression progression into deceit, destruction, devastation, judgment. Hmm. That's why whenever I hear people make mention of this thing called progressive Christianity, it's like, ha! You gotta, you gotta laugh at the the irony in such a um, silly, uh, idiotic statement such as progressive Christianity. Uh, progression. What is the progression of these things here that we're looking at today? It get worse. Go to Daniel now. Go to Daniel chapter 9. Again, people, they, there's no getting away from what's coming. Okay? God's judgment is coming. Whether you, whether you want to believe that or not, whether you like that or not, it doesn't matter. Okay? Right now, you might think, Things are good. We have a little bit of respite. And we do. What are you going to do with this time? Hmm? Daniel chapter 9, verses 3 on to verse 19. Now, you've got to also remember, in context, Daniel is both praying for himself and for his nation. Okay? Now, when it comes, when it comes to the nation of America, we're done. Okay, we're done. God's judgment on America is imminent, or imminent. Excuse me, it's coming. There's no getting away from it. And on a personal level. God's judgment is coming in the time of Jacob's trouble. One day, a whole bunch of people are going to disappear. And then it's going to begin such a time that the world has never seen. Called the time of Jacob's trouble, which is for the Jews. Okay? <laughs> now they're going to are they going to, you know, and this is something that could be talked about or thought on, but how are they going to institute uh, when people disappear? Oh, maybe aliens, right? <laughs> be very, it's going to be very interesting in the very least to see what they do with that. But Daniel chapter 9 verses 3 on to verse 19. Who prays like this? Do you? And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. So again, like I said at the beginning of this video, got to remember the dispensational difference. This is for our instruction in righteousness. How does Daniel start out this prayer? O oh Lord, God first, in the beginning God, okay? Verse 5. We, including himself, have sinned, and have committed iniquity, and have done wickedly, and have rebelled, even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgments. Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants, the prophets, which spake in thy name to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. And remember you, about Daniel, he was greatly beloved. Okay? You have to remember that. But see, even though he was greatly beloved, he humbled himself by what? Supplication, fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. Okay? Okay? All signs of humbling himself. 
all things of humility before the Lord. Humble yourselves before the Lord. Submit yourselves, therefore, unto the Lord. Okay? So, he wasn't saying it's me and them. No, we. Putting himself in that equation. He was someone greatly beloved. Verse 6 again. Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants the prophets, which spake in thy name to our kings, our princes, our fathers, and to all the people of the land. O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us confusion of faces, and God is not the author of confusion. As at this day, to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and unto all Israel. They are near, that are near, and that are far off. Through all the countries whither thou hast driven them. Because of their trespass that they have trespassed against thee. O Lord, to us belongeth confusion of face. To our king. To our princes and to our fathers because we have sinned against thee now in context his whoop, he's praying for his people israel he is a jew praying for his people of israel including himself our instruction and in righteousness who is praying that way for us today here in america or even in your nation i do believe there are a few very few very few very, very few. Yes. But see, that, that is what is needed. But it only exists in a very few. And those are the ones who are of the church of the living God. Verse 9. To the Lord our God belongeth mercies and forgiveness, though we have rebelled against him. Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his laws, which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. Now again, he is talking about the nation of Israel, but for our instruction and righteousness. And also put this on a personal level, okay? He's including himself within that prayer. But on an individual basis, yourself, you know, You know you've sinned against the Lord, right? Or do you? Or do you? You might be one, I'm not a sinner. <laughs> I'm going to be putting two videos if you're lost that I hope you will watch. Two videos in the description box. Okay? I hope you watch them. Okay? Let's continue. And he hath confirmed his words, which he spake against us and against our judges, that judged us by bringing upon us a great evil for under the whole heaven hath not been done as hath been done upon Jerusalem yes to much to whom much is given much is required the Jew is the apple of God's eye there's no getting away from that and God did that unto his own people again I think this is over huh As it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil has come upon us. Yet made we not our prayer before the Lord our God, that we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. Therefore hath the Lord watched upon the evil and brought it upon us. For the Lord our God is righteous in all his works which he doeth. 
for we obeyed not his voice. And that's in a nutshell, brethren. You lost people out there? That's in a nutshell. Man has not obeyed the Lord. Man without God can accomplish nothing of a lasting continuance. Okay? You read in Genesis chapter 11, when all man get together, they built towers to reach up onto heaven. We are gods. Okay? Without God, without our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, all is vanity of vanities. Seth the preacher. All is vanity. Egypt is not going to save you. Therefore hath the Lord watched upon the evil and brought it upon us. For the Lord our God is righteous in all his works which he doeth. For we obeyed not his voice. And now, O Lord, our God, thou hast brought thy people forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand, and hast gotten thee renowned, as at this day we have sinned, we have done wickedly. He's including himself in there. You know, he's not disassociating. O Lord, according to thy, all thy righteousness, I beseech thee, let thine anger and thy fury be turned away from thy city Jerusalem, thy holy mountain, because of our sins and for the iniquities of our fathers. Jerusalem and thy people are become a reproach to all that are about us. Now therefore, O our God, hear the prayer of thy servant and his supplications and cause thy face to shine upon thy sanctuary that is desolate for the Lord's sake. O oh my God, incline thine ear and hear. Open thine eyes and behold our desolations and, thy sit and the city which is called by thy name. For we do not present our supplications before thee for our righteousnesses, but for thy great mercies. Who prays like this? You think these people talking about revival? Which is insane. Revival is not coming. Okay? But they're get, who prays like this? Do you? Do you pray like this, brethren? This is Daniel, a man greatly beloved of the Lord. Including himself within that. We have sinned. Verse 18, O oh my God, incline thine ear and hear, open thine eyes, and behold our desolations, and the city which is called by thy name. For we do not present our supplications before thee for our righteousnesses, but for thy great mercies. O oh Lord, hear. O oh Lord, forgive. O oh Lord, hearken and do. Defer not for thine own sake, O oh my God, for thy city and for thy people and for thy city and thy people are called by thy name. Praise like that. See, God's judgment is inevitable. Again, Pharaoh's army has come out of Egypt, distracting you. And you have a little time of respite right now. You do. What are you going to do with this time? Are you going to get back into that circle, that circular thing where, okay, there are the Jesuits uh, are rewarding us with a little time of uh, peace, and then all of a sudden, uh, probably during the fall or winter time, they're going to crack back down on it? Time's almost up, people. God's judgment is inevitable. Okay? God's judgment is inevitable. Again, 
Jeremiah 37. Okay? Jeremiah 37, verses 9 and 10. Thus saith the Lord, Deceive not yourselves, saying, The Chaldeans shall surely depart from us, for they shall not depart. God's judgment is not departing. Okay? It's inevitable. For though ye had smitten the whole army of the Chaldeans that fight against you, no matter what you do, and there remain but wounded men among them, yet should they rise up every man in his tent and burn this city with fire. Without God, the Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, you have absolutely no hope, boy. None. Hosea. Hosea chapter 6. Hosea chapter 6. Verses 1 and verse 3. Come. And let us return on to the Lord. For he hath torn and he will heal us. He has smitten, and he will bind us up. After two days will he revive us, and the third day he will ra raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. Reference unto the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord, his going forth is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rain unto the earth. Again, this is for our instruction in righteousness, right there, proving latter rain, which these wicked para, uh, Pentecatholic, para Catholics like to talk about the latter rain is for today. No, it's future. Um, it's for the future of Israel. Okay, it's pertaining on to Israel. But for our instruction in righteousness, that's what we're looking at this for. Okay. Okay. Isaiah. Chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55, verses 6 on to verse 9. Okay. Pharaoh's army has come out. They're distracted. Think you got peace. They're lifting all their stuff. Think this is over. Isaiah 55, verse 6, on to verse 9. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Hmm. Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. Verses 12 on to verse 19. Therefore also now saith the Lord, Turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning. And rend your heart and not your garments. And turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. Who knoweth if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. 
Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children and those that suck the breasts. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar, and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their God? Then will the Lord be jealous for his land, and pity his people. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. But I will remove far off from you the northern army, and will we're reading verse 20, and will drive him into a land barren and desolate, with his face toward the east sea, and his hinder part toward the utmost sea. And his stink shall come up, and his ill savor shall come up, because he hath done great things. Now see, that restoration part sounds good, but what comes before that? Repentance. Godly sorrow. Turning from your self-righteousness. On a national level, on a national scale, this is impossible. Some of you might, well, all things are possible with God. Yes, you're right. But remember, God is not forcing anything upon anybody. Okay? You have the free will to choose. Okay? You as the individual, you as the person, spirit, soul, and body, you have hope. Church of the living God is still here. Okay? Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Because once the Jesuits clamp down once again, and they will! Oh! They will! Because God's judgment is coming. Okay? It, his judgment has already happened. But oh, oh no. More is on the way. Okay? More. His judgment is coming. Right now, there's a little space. What are you going to do with it, dear friend? Hmm? What are you going to do with it? Hosea chapter 13. Hosea chapter 13. Verses 9 on to verse 14. Hosea chapter 13, verses 9 on to verse 14. O Israel, thou hast destroyed thyself, but in me is thine help. Lost person, you've destroyed yourself, but in the Lord is your help. I will be thy king. Where is any other that may save thee in all thy cities? And thy judges, of whom thou saidest, Give me a king and princes? Jesus Christ is your God, whether you like that or not. Whether you want to accept that or not, Jesus Christ is your God. He is the Father. And you're not going to get away from that. In Him is your help. I gave thee a king in mine anger, and took him away in my wrath. The iniquity of Ephraim is bound up, his sin is hid. Is hid. The sorrows of a travailing woman shall come upon him. He is an unwise son, for for he should not stay long in the place of the breaking forth of children. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. O death, I will be thy plagues. O grave, I will be thy destruction. Repentance shall be hid from mine eyes.
Your only hope is the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. That you may be saved, born again, converted. Because you will. <laughs> this ain't over, people. This ain't over. Right now you got you, you got a little time of respite. Now's the time you need to be seeking the Lord. Okay, now's the time. Because what's coming? You know, it's, like I said, it's going to be really interesting to see what they what they do. And when I say they, I mean Mystery Babylon. Roman Catholicism, okay? The Jesuit order. The mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, okay? When I say they, that's who I mean. Roman Catholicism. Okay? Hosea chapter 14. Now again, dispensationally, doctrinally for the children of Israel. This is for our instruction and in righteousness which I said to you from the beginning. O Israel, return unto the Lord thy God for thou hast fallen by thine iniquity. Take with you words and turn to the Lord. Say unto him, take away all iniquity and receive us graciously. So will we render the calves of our lips. A sure shall not save us. We will not ride upon horses. Neither will we say any more to the work of our hands. Ye are our gods. For in thee the fatherless find mercy. I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely. For mine anger is turned away from him. Now this is talking about future fulfillment for Israel. Okay? This has not happened yet. Our instruction and in righteousness you get saved the Lord saves you okay I will heal their backsliding I will love them freely for mine anger is turned away from them. I will be as the dew unto Israel he shall grow as the lily and cast forth his roots as Lebanon his branches shall spread and his beauty shall be as the olive tree and his smell as Lebanon they that dwell under his shadow shall return. They shall revive as the corn and grow as the vine. The scent thereof shall be as the wine of Lebanon. Ephraim shall say, What have I to do any more? What have I to do any more with idols? I have heard him and observed him. I am like a green fir tree. From me is thy fruit found. Who is wise? Wisdom, fear the Lord. And he shall understand these things. Prudent, and he shall know them. For the ways of the Lord are right, and the just shall walk in them. But the transgressor shall fall in them. And the just will walk in them, in his ways. Walk according to the scriptures. Okay? Also, too. Almost forgot this big part. Go to First Kings. Go to First Kings. Almost forgot this. First Kings chapter twenty. First Kings chapter twenty. We will begin at verse nine, on to verse twenty, on to verse twenty-nine. First Kings twenty, verses nine on to verse twenty-nine. Now this is a conflict between uh, King Ahab, whose wife was Jezebel, King Ahab, a very wicked king, and Ben-Hadad, okay, the king of Syria. All right. Now this is a little bit of what the, uh, a little bit of the goings on between these two. Okay, gotta remember, King Ahab was a very wicked king. I remember that. Check this out. Check this out. Okay? 
verses 9 on to verse 29. Wherefore he said unto the messengers of Benhadad, Tell my lord the king, all that thou didst send for to thy servant at the first I will do, but this thing I may not do. And the messengers departed and brought him word again. He was seeking mischief against uh, King Ahab. And uh, the, um, Ben-Hadad asked for all this stuff, and King Ahab kept doing it. And then he crossed the line of asking too much, and then King Ahab's like, ain't doing it. Okay, that's the backstory. Look that up on your own time. Let's continue. And Ben-Hadad sent unto him and said, The gods do so unto me, and more also, if the dust of Samaria shall suffice for handfuls for all the people that follow me. And the king of Israel answered and said, Tell him, let not him that girdeth on his harness boast himself as he that putteth it off. In other words, don't give too full of yourself. And it came to pass when Ben-Hadad heard this message, as he was drinking, he and the kings in the pavilions, that he said unto his servants, Set yourselves in array. And they set themselves in array against the city. And behold, there came a prophet unto Ahab, king of Israel, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Hast thou seen all this great multitude? Behold, I will deliver it into thine hand this day, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord. And Ahab said, By whom? And he said, Thus saith the Lord, Even by the young men of the princes of the provinces. Then he said, Who shall order the battle? And he answered, Thou. Oh. This, uh, this was one of the wicked kings in Israel. But the Lord was having mercy. Okay? He was having mercy during this time period. Then he numbered the, the young men of the princes of the provinces. And they were 232. And they were 232. And after them he numbered all the people, even all the children of Israel being 7,000. And they went out at noon, but Ben-Hadad was drinking himself drunk in the pavilions, he and the kings, and thirty and two kings that helped him. And the young men of the princes of the provinces went out first, and Ben-Hadad sent out, and they told him, saying, There are men come out of Samaria. And he said, Whether they be come out for peace, take them alive. Or whether they be come out for war, take them alive. So these young men of the princes of the provinces came out of the city, and the army which followed them. And they slew every one his man, and the Syrians fled, and Israel pursued them. And Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria, escaped on an horse with the horsemen. And the king of Israel went out and smote the horses and chariots, and slew the Syrians with a great slaughter. Got himself a victory. The Lord said so. Okay? Now check this out. And the prophet came to the king of Israel and said unto him, Okay? Go, strengthen thyself, and mark, and see what thou doest. For at the return of the year, the king of Syria will come up against thee. So this enemy that he defeated, because the Lord said he was going to do it, the Lord gave him grace, the Lord was merciful unto his people, okay? He whooped this guy of Syria, Ben-Hadad, but he said, For at the return of the year, the king of Syria will come up against thee. Strengthen yourself. What does it say? Go strengthen thyself and mark and see what thou doest. Prepare. And the servants of the king of Syria said unto him, Their gods are the gods of the hills. Note the little G's there. Therefore they were stronger than we. But let us fight against them in the plain, and surely we shall be stronger than they. Well, see, that one method didn't work, really. But let us pull back and go at them another way. See. And do this thing, take the kings away, every man out of his place, and put captains in their rooms. So the poor may, he humbleth himself, so that the poor may fall by his strong ones. Take the king away, send out other people. 
and number thee an army like the army that thou hast lost, horse for horse and chariot for chariot. And we will fight against them in the plain, and surely we will be stronger than they. And he hearkened unto their voice. And it came to pass at the return of the year that Ben-Hadad numbered the Syrians and went up to Aphek to fight against Israel. And the children of Israel were numbered and were all present and went against them. And the children of Israel pitched before them like two little flocks of kids, but the Syrians filled the com uh, country. So the Syrians filled the country. Little, they, the size comparison. Syrians were bigger than Israel. And there came a man of God and spake unto the king of Israel and said, Thus saith the Lord, Because the Syrians have said, The Lord is God of the hills, but he is not God of the valleys. Therefore will I deliver this great multitude into thine hand, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. And they pitched one over against the other seven days. And so it was that in the seventh day the battle was joined. And the children of Israel slew of the Syrians and hundred thousand footmen in one day. So yes, a second victory was given them. Yes, yes, yes. But look what happened. Look what happened. Okay. Now, after the defeat of Ben-Hadad, God marked for judgment Ben-Hadad to be destroyed. But King Ahab didn't do that. Okay? You can continue to read on. But what we're going to be doing, we're going to be picking up now from verse 35 onto the close of the chapter. Again, God's judgment is inevitable. Got some time to respite. Strengthen yourself. Strengthen yourself. King Ahab, at the return of the king of Syria, won a victory. But see, his heart was never right with the Lord. God gave him that victory. Not for his sake, but for his name's sake. Okay? Because he cared for the people. Okay? But look at the judgment that happens on Ahab. Verse 35 on to verse 43. And a certain man of the sons of the prophets said unto his neighbor, In the word of the Lord, smite me, I pray thee. And the man refused to smite him. Then said he unto him, Because thou hast not obeyed the voice of the Lord, behold, as soon as thou art departed from me, a lion shall slay thee. And as soon as he was departed from him, a lion found him and slew him. Let me put it to you like this, dear friend. You have a little bit of respite. You have time right now, right? You've been given a little grace. The enemy is coming back. Are you going to get that victory? Hmm? Is it going to be given you? But yet, because your heart isn't right, because you're not in obedience, hmm? not repentant, not contrite, huh? What are you going to do? There's a line in the way. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Let's continue here. Verse 37. Then he found another man and said, Smite me, I pray thee. And the man smote him, so that in smiting he wounded him. <laughs> I, I, I always liken that the, the individual, the man in uh, verse 37, heard about what happened in verses 35 and 36. And I, I, I like to imagine that he heard about that. It's like, oh, he said this to Oh, oh boom! <laughs> Without hesitation. <laughs> that, that's just me, I beg your pardon. Let's continue. So that so the prophet departed and waited for the king by the way and disguised himself with ashes upon his face. And as the king passed by, he cried unto the king. And get a load of this. And he said, Thy servant went out into the midst of the battle. And behold, a man turned aside 
and brought a man unto me, and said, Keep this man, if by any means he be missing, then shall thy life be for his life, or else thou shalt pay a talent of silver. And as thy servant was busy here and there, he was gone. And the king of Israel said unto him, So shall thy judgment be. Thyself hast decided it. And he hasted and took the ashes away from his face. And the king of Israel discerned him that he was of the prophets. And he said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Because thou hast let go out of thy hand a man whom I appointed to utter destruction. Therefore thy life shall go for his life, and thy people for his people. And the king of Israel went to his house heavy and displeased and came to Samaria. What are you going to do, dear friend? You're an absolute fool if you think we've seen the last of all of this. You're an absolute fool. It's not done. It's not over. Right now you have a little little grace that's been given you. What are you doing with it? Hmm? Is the Lord calling you? Hopefully, hopefully you have eyes to see, ears to hear, and understanding hearts. Hopefully you do. Because When they bring it back, it's going to be ten times worse. What are you going to do? God's judgment is inevitable. What are you going to do about it? I mean, that's going to be it for this uh, short video. Um, just wanted to share this with you. Got other videos coming, Lord willing. Um, like I said, brethren got um, pretty busy around here recently um, with many things. So please do keep us in your prayers. Um, thank you for watching this. If you do, hopefully, um, hopefully the Lord be magnified through this. That's all that. That's all that this is about. Thank you, brothers and sisters, Church of Living God. We love you. We are praying for you. Don't forget to pray for one another. And we will see you in the next video.